Lights out. They say follows a set pattern. Some of the patterns are good, others, shall we say, vary. If at the moment the pattern of your life doesn't seem too helpful, don't worry. Just be thankful that your name isn't Al March. Lights out. Dr. Grove? Yeah? I'm Dorothy March. Al March's sister, the nurse at the desk, asked me to come right up. Oh, yes, yes. Please come in, Miss March. Will you sit down? Your brother's very anxious to see you. Well, this morning the police said I wasn't permitted to have any visitors. Miss March, the medical staff is an authority in the city hospital, not the police. His nurse told them that you had been here to visit him, and he insisted that we call you back. We have because we can't risk his getting excited. Because of the operation? Yes. Scheduled to take place in a couple of hours. It's not too dangerous, is it? Just an ordinary head injury, as far as the x-rays show. Ryerson, one of our best surgeons, is going to operate. Well, must be frightened. On the contrary, he's quite calm. He is. He seems surprised. Well, he's always been so afraid of operations. Of anything where the risk of death were involved. Aren't most people? Oh, no, no, not like Al. He thinks about it all the time. Miss March, when you get to see your brother, you mustn't allow the conversation to take any direction which might upset him. Specifically, I mean what he did last night. How can I avoid talking about it? You'll have to try. I thought I knew him so well. And now he does this. If I could only understand why. There's a history of another head injury in Germany. When we learned your brother was a veteran, we sent for his medical records in Washington. Oh, yes, I know. That, that was an explosion in the barracks. Mm -hmm. Did you find out anything else? No, we haven't allowed anyone to question him yet, but we'll do our best to find an explanation. The army changed him. Perhaps. I think we'd better go now, hmm? Um, you can leave your coat here. And the newspaper. You see, we'd rather he didn't get a chance to read any of the stories. I don't think he fully ex understands the extent of the harm he did. I think you'd better go in first. All right, Dr. Grove. Al, you look fine. Dorothy. Steve took me to the eye show Saturday night. It's wonderful. You'll have to see it. The doctors tell you not to talk about it? Oh, it's, it's not a dangerous operation. I don't mean the operation. Are they all dead? Oh, please, I... I want to talk about it. Are they dead? Are they? Yes. Well, you... You look as if you were relieved. They were trying to kill me, the three of them. They've been after me for six years. I killed them in self-defense. Who were they? I don't know. No, no, Dorothy, I'm not insane. Although I may have to pretend to be to avoid a trial. It was self-defense. They shouldn't punish me. 
Not for that, anyway. But, Al, if it was self-defense, you can tell the police. You don't have to... Do you know what they'd think if I told them my story? They'd think I was insane. Oh, let's not talk about it. Now let's wait till That's later. That's I got you here. I want you to understand why I did it. And I wanted to explain before the operation, don't, just in case... it's nothing to worry about. Dr. Grove told me. Never can tell about operations. <laughs> I've been running away from those three, from death, for six years. I suddenly squeeze up enough courage to turn them, face them. Some cop hits me too hard, and here I am facing death all over again. Al, don't. Dorothy, Dorothy, sit down and listen to me, please. The first time I saw them was in Germany. And there was something strange about the whole thing, right from the beginning. It was one of those things, you know, where you're watching something or doing something, and all of a sudden it seems like everything, down to the smallest detail, had happened before. Did that ever happen to you? Yes, once in a while. Well, that's the way it was when I saw him. It was in 1945, right after the German surrender, when I was with the occupation troops. I couldn't sleep one night. It was stuffy in the barracks. So I put on my coat, sneaked out for a cigarette and some fresh air. I was walking around a little, close to the barracks, so the guys on guard duty wouldn't spot me. Then I saw them. First, there were just the two of them. Woman and a younger man. I was in the shadows. They didn't see me. And it was as though I'd lived through the whole scene before. Only I couldn't remember when. Everything all right? Yes. Straighten that. Just a minute. They waited for a minute to tick by. While they waited, I thought of what I was supposed to do. They were going to blow up the barracks, and I was supposed to stop them. How? I had no gun. It wasn't time enough to sneak away and find the guards. There was only one way to stop them. That was to shout, to bring the guards running. If I did that, I'd get a bullet in me. They'd have time for that. Maybe the barracks would be saved, but I'd be dead. A dead hero. Why me? I wasn't on guard duty. I just happened to see them. I didn't shout. Didn't even breathe for fear they'd hear me. They were so close. Let's go. Now I could shout. No, I'd have to tell how I knew, and the officers would ask me, why didn't you shout the minute you saw them? Besides, it'd be too late. When they heard the guards, they pressed the detonator. There was one other chance. The wire was strong. I had nothing to cut it with. I could still hear their voices in my head. Everything all right? Yes. Yeah. Straighten that. Just a minute. Let's go. Somehow, I knew that those words were supposed to introduce me to the dead I'd always feared so much. I was meant to die that night, but I didn't. There's 260 men in those barracks. 41 were killed. 134 were wounded. I knew all of them. Some were my friends. Well, you've tormented yourself. What then? Do you want me to forget about it? To laugh? To sing? With the blood they of your friend? They killed them, those three. Uh. Yes, and I could have prevented it. That makes me an accomplice. When you know somebody's going to commit a murder and you can stop it and you don't, the law says that you're an accessory before the fact. That you're as guilty as the murder. I don't know. I know. I looked it up. Looked it up? Yes. I wanted to know what the punishment should be. Oh, Al, listen. 
And you expected me to be horrified when you told me, didn't you? Well, I'm not. Well, I understand you. I understand why you've always been so afraid of death. Mother always harping on it, always wearing black for father and that brother of hers. Well, I was too young to know what it meant then, but I still remember. And then when Mother died, the only memories you had were Mother and Death, don't you see? Well, I can understand. Why can't you? You were afraid. And maybe you did something terrible, but it wasn't your fault. Yes, try to fight your fear, but don't try to punish yourself for it. You're forgetting something. What? I fought my fear last night, and I killed the three of them. <coughs> You mean the people in the shooting gallery were the same three? There's more to my story. Those three people who blew up the barracks were killed that same night. The guards got all three of them. I saw the pictures when I got out of the hospital. They were the same three. The woman and the two men, dead. But the people last That was in 1945. Next year, I was shipped back to the States for discharge. Honorable discharge. For that whole year, I hadn't once forgotten that night. I felt that I was living on borrowed time, or stolen time. But that night that I was discharged, I, I had a couple of drinks with a buddy of mine before I flew back here. And, and I just got to the airport in time to make the plane. Flight 101 for Chicago, now leaving at gate 9. Passenger Al March, please report to gate 9. Your flight is ready to leave. Passenger Al March, please report to gate 9. Everything all right? Yes. Straighten that. Just a minute. Let's go. Are you Al March? We've been waiting for you, Mr. March. Mr. March! Aren't you, Mr. March? We've been waiting for you, she said. That simpering, pasted-on smile. And I ran away. The plane, did it crash? No. No, but it would have if I'd have been on it. Or there would have been some kind of an accident I wouldn't have lived through. I knew that if those three people ever got hold of me to a place where I couldn't run away, it'd be the end. Al, Al, it couldn't have been the same three people. You said they were dead. You said the guard shot them. You mean it's all in my mind? Who are we to say what's possible and what's impossible? I keep thinking of how little we know. Oh, Dorothy. Dorothy, I believe that there's a pattern of life, that man isn't strong enough to break through. But suppose it could be broken through, not through strength, but through weakness, through fear and cowardice. I don't understand. I mean that those three people were meant to die that night. But first, I was meant to be their victim. They died, I lived, the pattern was broken. But now the pattern was trying to restore itself. I don't know how many times those next six years I, that scene was repeated. Everywhere. I'd go into a barber shop and they'd be there. Two barbers and a manicurist. And they'd say the words, and the barber would turn to me with a razor shining in his hand and say, next. And I'd run away. But then I'd meet them again on a bus or in a theater or passing the house when I left in the morning. And I'd always run away. Well, that's why you traveled so much, why you never stayed with any one job. Yes. And that's what I lived through for six years. Can you understand the terror? But even a coward can only take just so much. You get tired of running away. You decide to stick it out just once. To see what happens after they say their words. And you're still standing there, facing them. That was last month, and I waited for the next meeting. Now it seemed as if they were avoiding me, as if they knew it was going to be different. Last night I found them. I'd wandered over to a carnival on the south side. Let's go. 
step right up and win a prize. You know Harry, don't you? Sure, hi. Hi. I'll be back to take over in a little while. We're going out and get some coffee. Everything all right? Yes. Hey, straighten that. Just a minute. Let's go. Wait a minute. I got another shot coming. Come on. Let's get it over with. I'm not running away. I just stood there a minute, thinking of how at last I was rid of them. For the first time in six years, I felt good all the way through. Then the blackness came, like the night of the explosion. Al, that policeman had to hit you. Your hands were still near the gun. He couldn't take any chances. Al, don't worry about anything. I'm going to get a lawyer. You... We'll claim you were temporarily insane. It'll be all right. Oh, Dorothy, I knew you'd understand. I have to pretend they won't believe me. I feel so much better now that I've told you. That's good. Now about the operation. Now, don't worry about it. That's just it. I'm not so worried. Ever since last night, I'm not so worried about those things. What do you mean? Well, when I picked up that rifle, it was as though everything in the world were trying to hold me back. It was the hardest thing I ever did in my life. But I did it because I was tired of running away. Suppose once I broke through that pattern through weakness, and this time I broke through with strength. Al, stop it. Stop talking about patterns and dying. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I was all upset. Sure. I think you'd better leave now, Miss Bart. Don't worry about anything. Don't you worry. I'll see you later. Roger. You can wait in my office if you like. I'll be down in a few minutes. All right, Dr. Gould. You have a very pretty sister. Too late, Doc. She's engaged. Uh, and I was just going to send my wife to Reno. They have to get them ready. I know it may not seem ethical, but while waiting in the car, dear, I overheard your brother's story. I was going to tell you anyway. Good. You know, he made one particularly revealing remark. When he said that he killed in self-defense, he added, I shouldn't be punished. Not for that, anyway. Apparently, your brother had an earlier sense of guilt. And allowing the barracks to be blown up accentuated it. That's what he's punishing himself for. Now, you and I know that those three people he saw in Germany, the airport, dozens of other places, couldn't have been the same ones because the original three had died. This, I think, Miss March, is what had been happening to your brother. Every time he saw a group of people which was like the first, that is, two men and a woman in conversation, his mind superimposed the details of the explosion, which his sense of guilt had burned into his mind. Is that how you explain it? For the moment, yes. Well, what would have happened if he'd gotten on that airplane? Or if he'd been unable to run away from any one of those other incidents? Without being prepared to fight them as he was that night at the shooting gallery? Yes. Hmm. I don't know. The mind can have amazing powers over the body. For instance, there are many drivers who have numerous automobile accidents from sheer carelessness, apparently. Most of them are just bad drivers. But some, and we know this for a fact, are subconsciously trying to punish themselves or to escape from unhappiness. You, you mean he was pushing himself toward death? If his feelings of guilt were strong enough, who knows? You've made it sound very logical. But I wonder if, if there aren't things we're still to learn about what's possible and what's impossible. 
Al said, how little we know. I'm not afraid. I've broken the pattern through strength this time. It's broken for good. It's the only way to fight fear, by striking back against it. This is a sort of a trial for me. To see if I've really banished my fear of death. Death. Just another word. D-E-A-T-H. One syllable, nothing to it. You say a word over and over, it loses its meaning. It becomes just a sound. Death. Stupid, lisping sound. Everything all right? Yes. Straighten that. life for you. Just a pattern. Maybe we can break the pattern and maybe we can't. But one can't be blamed for trying. <laughs> <laughs> 